All right, let's jump right into it. We've got a YouTube super thanks. This one's for you. Going out to Jason Halcom, 308. Two dollar super thanks on that father and son having Arma RC fun fails video. Definitely appreciate that, man. And uh, now on to the show. Sometimes the money that you spend, there's, there's an actual reason why. It's not in every case, but we're going to find out something here. It's kind of like a preview to something that's coming to the channel. Is it worth it to spend the extra money for ease of repairability and parts availability? This kind of flows into another video. But anyways, we're working on the big rock. It is pretty easy to kind of figure it out. Um, when the car, truck, whatever you want to call it, when it took off, right, it pulls or puts or tries to put most of its power kind of to the rear. And that means the front end would kind of, you know, be able to uh, allow it to be able to spin or lift up and have less traction in the front. All the power really, not all the power, but a majority of the power goes to the back. So what you need to do is kind of put the vehicle static, grab the diff, or grab the, the wheels, spin them in the same direction, and hear that noise? Rear differential's gone. Ah, man. The, the other thing, too, that I do have to do, I want to do the um, hole for the chassis because this is not allowing any debris to kind of disappear, but I might just leave it the way it is for now. So what that means is we're going to go ahead and take off this um, mount here. This thing is actually all right. This truck's, you know, survived only because it really didn't get a chance to get out there. So... Pop out the center drive shaft, release the module, disconnect the wires, shocks off, these links off, and then this whole thing can kind of just pop out, pulling out a couple screws on the bottom here. So let's just, uh, let's just get started on this thing. Pop out this screw to release that um, little red thing there, chassis to motor mount uh, brace plate looking block thing. Sometimes these do get stuck, but if you normally you can normally can take this and slide or pull and it basically it, it just slides it out there are times when grit and stuff can get in there and you got to kind of wedge something in there but you'll have to take the drive shaft out this does make it easier to go ahead and pull the drive shaft out so sometimes this little red piece comes with it sometimes it doesn't pull that out we'll lift it up like this and then we'll slide this portion back collapsing the drive shaft into itself like that checking the bearing uh, again I, i've already been here i know the bearing is fine i may put a little bit of grease on here just to kind of for the um stuff that i've got there the the cow rc junk so don't lose your parts now normally what i do is i i put the vehicle kind of against me you lift up on this tab so you can see it's got two pull things so you lift up on the tab and you kind of wiggle it like back and forth once you get this tab past a certain part it will kind of retain itself and then you can kind of just wiggle it or slide it back and forth and it and it comes out I'm gonna disconnect these wires so we've got the fan and blue wire together right there yellow and orange now you see I've got some extra stuff on here and that's because it looks like I've got to do it again so you can see over time the wires um, chafe. they kind of the word is chafe guy they go up against each other and what you have to pay attention to is that these don't short out. So it's good that I'm seeing that because what that tells me is I need to take off this shrink wrap both and redo it so that we don't get, we don't want to destroy this ESC. That That's something that can destroy the ESC when these wires rub against each other and, and arc out. So definitely good that I'm seeing that so I can square that away. This is something I just noticed. I keep these. This is a blown out bearing. This is the uh, inner race of a bearing that I had that blew out. And I do usually keep these for spacers, placing them over cups. And I went to go place this one over to see if this would fit. And it, it does. And then I noticed I had a line and I'm looking at it. I'm like, what the heck is that? This is broken. So my slipper clutch this side is actually cracked see how my fingernails stuck in there 
this is actually cracked in half. And you can see there's a fracture line right there. I'm going to take a picture with my uh, camera, my regular camera, so we can see, or so I can show you what's going on here. I don't know if we can zoom in on that, but there's your crack, man. Look at that. That, that zoomed in pretty dang good. So that's also another reason why, that's also another reason why you have that sleeve that goes on there. Look at that. That is cracked all the way to the bearing. Wow. Look at that fissure. That's nuts, man. So this might be a bad maneuver to go ahead and do, but I am going to take this uh, sleeve and I'm going to hammer this sleeve on. Just not now because, yeah, the mesh still perfect. Didn't think I was going to have a problem with that, but I will end up tapping this on. I just want to make sure that I put this together when I tap that on. When I do that, it is going to make pulling this thing apart that much more difficult. Give and take, guy. Give and take. I should be able to still pry it out, but man, that's crazy that I caught that. Take out these two screws here just to kind of release the shocks from the shock tower. I'm going to also take the driver and go after these two screws, which will release the bumper away from the shock tower, allowing the skid plate and everything to kind of come apart. So you can pull that away. Shocks are disconnected. Go after those two links. Pull those out. Pop the links away. These Harbor Freight cheap pick tools, I think it was like a buck, for four of these pick tools is the perfect little RC kind of helper. Helps you kind of get in and, and get like uh, debris, sand, whatever gets impacted in these uh, little screw holes here. So we've got four screws. One, two, three, those hold the top plate on. This takes the skid plate off, which I don't need to do, so I can leave this one in place. So I just need to take out one, two, three. Like I said, you can leave that one in place. Now I wanna put my hand underneath to grab that shock tower so it doesn't fall out. Now we can pop this top and get a look and see what's going on here. Getting a look at this diff, you can see, see how it's stopping? Yeah, I can see what happened. All right, so I'm gonna pop this module out. It looks like the ring gear is okay. And what I did is I stripped out the pinion. So the pinion, I can see it, the pinion teeth broke. That's not that bad of a deal, man. The ring gear is still good, amazingly. But you can see, let's, uh, let's pull this thing apart. I was digging in here a little bit, and I did notice right there, that is one of the teeth. That's actually one of the teeth right there. That's one of the teeth. So I will have to go in here and kind of clean things. I did also notice on the underside here, you can see fibrous little pieces of teeth. So it does look like our, so it does look like our ring gear is okay. It just looks like you can see in there. You can actually see in there. And then once you rotate it, so there's a good section of gear. And then once you rotate it, all stripped. So you can definitely see there's uh, aftermath there. So if you take the driver, this is all teeth. So these are all teeth. Kind of a bummer because I did just use the other butter on this. Look at this all teeth. All chunks of teeth. Even in the top portion of the case. If you look right here. Little pieces of teeth. Oh, bummer, man, because I did just. This is like a waste of utter butter. 
Dang. Well, it is what it is, man. The other butter kind of did its job by keeping everything kind of together in one location, so. Case is fine. Did see something online that I may end up grabbing. Might be a bad idea, but then again, you never know. Sometimes you got to try things out. So before I found Hobby Quarters, um, I obviously did online shopping. This is... <laughs> right there, you can see it, guy. Uh, discount RC Parts. Arma Big Rock 3S BLX V3. So this is a completely brand new differential for a Big Rock. I mean, it's all the same. You know what I mean? It's all the same. So I could put this in my V2 Outcast if I wanted. Obviously, that would be a downgrade, but this is the stock gear set that belongs in that truck. So effectively, all I have to do is go ahead and pull off the Arma CVDs. I don't even need to clean nothing. I could take this and stick it in this bag and have differential parts knowing that this gear itself is junk. So that's the route that I'm going to go. The other thing I did want to show was I do have another complete slipper clutch. The gear on this one is worn, still usable. It does kind of have a flat spot right here where the gears, I think, kind of uh, had some misalignment. This would be possibly the way to go, except I like to push the boundaries of things and try certain like things obviously seeing that this is already split taking this sleeve this bearing sleeve and tapping it on will just extend the life of this is that a wise scenario i don't know i could go ahead and install this but you know what i am that kind of guy that i just want to do an experiment i mean this big rock i have had for how long might as well just keep this thing going with hack and slash upgrades or is that technically a downgrade i think that's an upgrade all right, let's see what we got here. So like I said, this is a brand new takeoff diff. That, um, at least I think it is. It better be. It was sold that way. <laughs> the gear kind of looks a little funky, but... Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's about right. It's got the Arma... It's got the Arma crunchiness to the gears. <laughs> All right, so it looks like we're good. So we will be doing that. We're just going to pop out the uh, set screws. So you got a couple of set screws of grub, screws, grub screws, one on each side of this. We'll take that, fit it onto there, and then we should be back in business here. So pop this one off. It's the other side. Technically, that will be a uh, parts one now. So when you put this together, you just want to make sure that you align your set screw with the little divot or um, section on the the uh, spline shaft. Put that in. No Loctite or anything like that needed. Just kind of screw it in. Just like that. Should be good. Flip it around on the other side. Do the same thing. Locate that portion. Make sure you put on your invisible gloves, like I've got on. Tighten that down. Again, it's not cranking. Do want to make sure that I did set this one enough. Yeah. All right. So there we go. That's how fast and easy it was. Let's put this back in the bag. And I should somehow label this. Maybe what I should do is do like a, do like an X or something. Bag is split. Do like an X so that I don't think that this. I mean, I think I'll know because there's grease on it. So, but you never know me, guy. No, we need no need to save any of this garbage. Still kind of bugs me about the auto butter though. 
take this and we'll just slot this right in place. Oops. Take this and we'll slot this right in place. That's another thing that's nice about these Arma vehicles is you can't mess up, dude. Yeah, it definitely has that uh, weird Arma tight kind of gear mesh. It'll break in, but definitely has that uh, funky kind of feel to it. So that is brand new. Um, and uh, it probably would be good. Damn it. That's the other thing, too. The other one I put fluid in because I tightened up this differential. Well, you know what? I'll go with this just the way it is. Do you want to take the other butter here? Give it an injection squeeze right into there. And then we'll let it eat. Just like that. I'm going to do one more little bit of an injection squeeze right there. Let it eat. And I think we should be good. I did want to just check. I did take out all the pieces. I just wanted to make sure. So I think we'll, I think we'll be good. Put this cap back on there, just like that. Cap my grease. all the three long screws making sure we still have rotation yep we do feels good give this just a little touch ah I think I just stripped that out crap what up I do reinstall the splines into the axles this isn't always the easy part especially when you're trying to work around a camera so if i put the shock in that'll kind of keep that together and i can still flop this out because that's not attached making sure i actually use the shock screws and not these screws that uh the shock screws growing into the going into the diff and ruining it did that once before now at least that's together and you know what I mean kind of makes it so I can makes it easier so I can key that into place so I can rotate the wheel and get it to go in because these are um, keyed a certain way you've got a thick section and a thin section And it's here somewhere. There we go. Put this in place. Boy, this camera being in the way sometimes is a pain. I'm trying to just get that into place. Slip the bumper down. Get that screw in there. Good enough. Still see the one screw is still there, which matches the length of this one. Same thing on this side. I'm gonna spline this axle into place. that flop this down we want to line that into place kind of almost have to do it flat sometimes you can get like the edge in and then slide it in that's it now while I'm here on this portion <clears throat> I still do have this one screw here to put underneath with this red locking piece. I'm going to fit that out to position like there. Take my driver and go in. Put 
good. Take the next one. It's the intuitiveness in the way things are done. Done. Now I didn't forget about this. I am gonna tap this on using a hammer and I'm just gonna tap it. So I should be able to just give it a couple of strikes. Here we go. Perfect, dude. Look at that. That's mint. Now, taking this apart might be kind of a pain, but what I'm hoping is I can just take a flat edge and kind of pry it away when it comes time. But look at that. It worked out mint, dude. Well, let's see if it did work out mint. Ah, it did. Look at that. Sweet. So now that we've got that piece on there, I'm actually very happy with that, dude. It worked out mint. So we're going to put in the module. Get the wires out of the way. This should slide in very easily because this is a brand new chassis. So, And usually you give it kind of like a little bit of a, a rock. Look at that. Mint. Now we can take this little red piece. Slot that into place. Just like that. Chassis lock screw. The little red interconnect spline piece. Insert that. The black sleeved piece. Slides over that. Now I can take our drive shaft, slide that this way, making sure that that spline connects into there, putting that bearing into place while collapsing this kind of all at the same time. So collapsing this while keeping this bearing into that little pocket. And there we go. I've done this myself. That's why I keep pointing to this. Make sure that this is all the way forward. Making sure that's all the way forward, that's easy because it literally just hits up against and you're good to go. Making sure that that bearing is in its little slot. Now I did mention, it's this one. So this one, the, um, the shrink wrap, the shrink tubing is worn away. What I can do is take off this red piece and just sleeve over a new piece and then shrink wrap that. That's the route that I'm going to go. So I'm going to very carefully take off the old. Don't ever cut towards yourself, by the way, like I just did. See if I can peel this off. This stuff had glue on it. This um, shrink tubing that I used is a very, uh, very good shrink tubing. That I used on here. It actually has an internal glue that keeps it in place. So it is funny that it's split. Here I am saying it's a great shrink wrap and it ended up splitting, but so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab another piece and just kind of sleeve it over that. This is the stuff I used, it's from WireFi. So I can just grab a piece like this and I'll be able to slip it over. So what I want to do is I want to get the length down so i'm gonna basically kind of cover over that whole section here so basically it looks like i'm gonna go to the 31 or that um right after the one let's take some cutters right after the one snip it like that slip this over i'm happy with that because i can still see the yellow take my burns matic torch these things usually take a couple of clicks to light. And then just give it a quick little, quick little touch here. And that's it. Now I connect up my Y's. Orange is on the bottom. Just double check on that one. Looks good. Connect it up. My yellow is next. Yellow slash red. Ended up working out mint. And then the blue, black. And then not forgetting the fan wire. 
Now the fan wire is laying a specific way, so hopefully this is the correct way. Take any battery that I've got, I'm just concerned to make sure that that works. Doesn't matter what if the battery's charged or not. Flip it on, see the fan motor worked? Both fan motors worked, good to go. So that's it, just a very simple repair with the big rock. Ended up finding out that the uh, differential, actually the, the ring gear on the differential is fine, it's the pinion gear that gave out, which is fine. I could have just opted to get a, a case. The case is probably like, I don't know, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, something like that. These I think are like 40 or 50 bucks, but I already had one, so it made it easy. When you go ahead and replace all the gears and the fluids and sometimes you need to weigh out your time spent versus the money spent and the money spent and the time spent kind of equaled out it's just easier swapping a new unit making sure that i cleaned everything and it's good to go so anyways this is rc guy garage the big rock is back baby what are you doing today it really is a uh, curiosity thing here so gonna go ahead and jump onto the computer here and uh, we're going to go on, we're going to go on uh, A Main because A Main is the online source that I would rather go to if I'm not going to Hobby Quarters. So let's just check out price wise. We already know what parts we need. We can also kind of verify how much maybe an upgrade would cost or we can verify what a factory, if they have it, I think they have an entire unit that would be a factory replacement. So let's just uh, jump into a main, a, a main.com. I think that's how it should show up. So we've got a main hobbies right here. Uh, they are trying to figure out how to make me an affiliate. So keep that in mind. At some point, I may have like uh, a main affiliate things. And sometimes people do ask. They, you know, they actually was, I think it was KGM. He's like, guy, how can I support your channel or something? I think it had to do with the Kau RC stuff. Um, he was asking if I had a uh, affiliate link. I don't. So, but look at that. The Cobra 8 is he a guy. All right. So, um... I just want to type in parts finder or uh, just going to try it this way. So A R R R I'm a big rock 3S diff. See if see if that actually works. Ah bam. Boom. All right. So for 100 bucks looks like you could get the factory Oh no, this is the metal gears. Whoa, wait a minute. This is coming with a whole ton of stuff. This comes with the factory gears, man. Ooh. So you could go that route if you wanted to go ahead. I hate when they do these pop-ups. Here I am saying, yeah, I'm going to become affiliate. I hate when they do these pop-ups. So let's just go hit the back button. All right. So is that right? Dude, that doesn't seem right. Wait a minute. Ah, so what did I say? I said it was like eight. I think I said it was like 12 or 15 bucks. So technically like 10 bucks. Kinda. Cause if we do the add to cart, continue. I just wanna see, I'm probably already like uh, in the thing here. Let's do it as like a uh, start the checkout kind of deal. Oh, we do need to add this. Actually, this is the only piece we need. But if you're going to go with the ring gear, you really should get also the pinion gear as well. So we'll add that to cot. We're still keeping this on the, uh, on the low, like, you know, on the cheap. This is the HD input gear. Is that going to make a difference? the hell's the, the the difference here so let's just back out of that i think this is the ah there's the mega that's metal though dude i'm all kinds of confused here how i got the mega versus the blx hd
<laughs> Whatever, dude. I'm more confused now. I'm more confused now. All right, let's just bear with me here. Let's go just Arma RC. Go to vehicles. We'll quickly, hopefully, just get onto Big Rock. I could go to Granite. You could go to Granite. You could go to whatever. But I, I want to go to Big Rock just to show you. You know, drag out this whole thing. It's not the Big Rock 6S. Let's try the Big Rock 3S. Which is... What's the last truck on the thing? All right. So here we go. We got to jump down to the ex uh, shoppable, shoppable, shoppable exploded view. That's the way to go. All right. So there's the whole unit. Don't they have like a breakdown of the unit? Thought they had a breakdown. Uh, yeah, guy. Where's the breakdown? Oh, there we go. All right, so it's over here. So the original part is ARA 311031. So if we click on that, that is, okay, so it is the HD input. It's weird how it's HD. How is that HD? So that is the right gear. Just wanted to just double check, guy. Just wanted to double check. I was getting kind of confused there. Something said HD versus whatever. So if you wanted to go ahead and just replace those two... Looking at over here, start the checkout process. We're looking at uh, 17 bucks. Then with tax, let's um, let's just go to secure checkout. Sign in. Ah, I should have continued as a guest. All right. Well, you can't see my address anyway because it's blurred out. <laughs> There's people out there that know my address. I don't care, dude. So $2.99 uh, would have it here by February 10th. So that's basically, that's, that's buying the case and it's buying the input gear. So the ring gear and the pinion. 21 bucks is what you'd have to pony up. Now, at that point in time, that's when you kind of got to go. I'm going to go to the shoppable. We're not going to go on to the A main website again. Gonna go on to the shoppable exploded view here. Let's just say I did want to replace this entire unit. So ARA uh, 310956. So yeah, so 60 bucks, dude. What? That whole thing is 60 bucks? For the plastic? Pre-assembled, super tough, straight cut. All right, that blah, whatever. Am I losing my mind here? Fitment, model, Big Rock Granite, Vendetta. That whole unit is 60 bucks? So if I... Wait a minute, wait a minute. So if I click on that... Alright, where, where was I here? I'm trying to figure out where the hell I... Where the hell I was... Replacement parts. Dude, that seems like hella expensive. 60 bucks for that entire unit? That whole replacement slipper clutch thing right there, that's uh, 17 bucks. If I needed to go ahead and replace that. Uh, there were bearings in there. At some point, I do have to think about bearings. Uh, that needs to be replaced. <laughs> Not for the big rock, but for something else. If you didn't see that video, you might want to go check it out, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I won't link it. Maybe you'll just have to search for it if it's something that you want to look at. Let's just click on that just one more time. Does it give, like, other parts? Nah, sometimes they, like, link. You know how they do it sometimes. They'll link, like, other parts along with that. So... Uh, I actually have a phone number that I got to take. Hello? Your conversation is being recorded. Hey, what's happening? Oh, okay. Crap. All right. 
I don't look for freebies. That's not, you know, that's not the kind of guy I am. But if, if that's what you want to do, that's, that's, that's totally fine. Okay. Do you have an expected uh, date of arrival? Because obviously that's, you know, the reason why I did the, the one day shipping was just to get it here. So, because obviously that, you know, that is the concern. And that's the concern that everybody's going to have is parts availability. And yeah, see, that's why I hate cell phones, man. Hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. Crap. All right. So, I don't know if I, yeah. So that recording, yeah, so that recording. So that phone call was exactly what I was talking about at the very beginning of what I had said. It's something that you might want to pay attention to on this channel. I mean, as well as maybe other channels. Um, but specifically, you know how I do things, guy. So I don't I don't mess around. Well, I mean, I do. do when I do this stuff, this is all messing around. So where are we here? So that was an awesome phone call. You really might want to think about think about what's what's coming, man. It's 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 cool, dude. It's definitely cool. So, anyways, uh, you got this diff set for sixty bucks, dude, or you buy the boost kit for a hundred and it's metal. What is Arma doing, man? Like, why would you why would you want this plastic garbage, man? Why would you want this plastic garbage over the metal? Ah, wait a minute. Do you have to buy the... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's see. Boost gears. Let's see if it's boost gears. So that's just that. All right, so that's, that's, uh, that's the metal optional parts. Optional parts, that might be where it is. Okay, so that it, yeah. Dude, why wouldn't you buy this? You'd have the metal gears. You'd have the metal input gear, or it's really a pinion gear, and you'd have the metal ring gear. That might be the way to go, guy. 100 bucks. And at least your gears would now be more doable. More longevity. And... It's a complete full two units and stickers. Come on, dude. You, you need the stickers. There you go. There's the boost box right there. That doesn't seem like a bad deal, man. But that still does seem weird that you'd pay 60 bucks for a single... A scavenge, man. <laughs>